Portfolio Builder members, welcome to our Monday Trade Alert, closing out the month of September. So far we've got Tom saying hello. Good morning, Tom. Start off with a quick piece about our program, jump into the most pertinent news and predictions, and then we'll close the, today's alert by looking at the results of our most recent trade alert. Extremely easy, on-the-go, 30-second daily retirement income trade alerts. Target return of investment of 1% a month, and we've only had a single losing month of negative 1%, with an average of 1.6%. For every $100,000 invested, our goal is to generate a $1,000 per month profit. Income and safety, not growth or speculation. Our simple 4 ETF portfolio is extremely diversified and all you'll need for your retirement. This allows you to simplify your holdings, reduce your risk, get better results with less work, and weatherproof your retirement portfolio. And I see a few more people saying hello in the chat. Good morning. Thanks for joining us live. We love having interaction during the webinar. So thanks and feel free to chat away in there. I'll be taking a look for any questions as we go. My promise to you is I will protect your assets and show you how to pick the low hanging fruit. Our put options hanging right below the SPY and TLT ETF, which typically represent over 80% of our total assets, make it impossible to lose very much money, period. And also, when you combine the fact that the TLT typically goes down when the SPY goes up, and vice versa, the simple combination of those two assets will make your portfolio extremely bulletproof. And remember, for every $25,000 you deposit at most brokers, you'll have $100,000 of buying power. Here is the trade alert schedule if you can put $100,000 to work. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we take advantage of three option expirations a week on the world's largest fund, the SPY ETF. It represents 504 American companies where your top positions are in companies like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google. On Tuesday, we have the insurance play against reckless monetary policy with silver, Currently, we're using Spot Silver SLV, and the ratio of this is 100 shares of SPY, 600 shares of SLV, and then finally on Thursday, this has been our biggest money maker. We've almost had no losing weeks on this play, 300 shares in the TLT ETF. For folks who don't know what the TLT is, it's a basket of long end, long duration treasuries. So we're talking 20 plus year treasuries. And really, we're not trying to make money with the uh, low rates that they pay, but we're playing the interest rate changes. Finally, the 10% allocation into GDX. Now we were playing GLD all year. That's when you play the spot price with GLD. Now we've moved over to GDX. GDX is the mining ETF. And there's really just a handful of top miners out there who are actually pulling gold out of the earth and ready to flip it for a huge profit at these elevated uh, $1,500 plus per ounce prices. Now note on the Tuesday play, we're using puts and calls to protect and turn this into an income play. Uh, as with all of the Monday through Friday trades, the buy and hold portfolio has a different purpose and we're not trying to limit its profits by selling call options against the asset. Now, once silver's spot price has had a major shoot to the upside, you can expect that we will rotate out of SLV into the miner ETF for silver. So gold is leading the way, still trading at very elevated prices. Central banks around the world are loading up on it. And we'll talk about what's headed this week, uh, but a hint, we have some 12 Fed speakers coming out this week, and I expect them all to hint at lower rates in October and the organic growth of the balance sheet. In fact, we're already seeing the Fed buying treasuries as we speak. 
Now, if you want to have a little less work and a little less volatility, but potentially a smaller annual return, you can skip the Tuesday trade. We already have a great allocation into precious metals with our buy and hold position. So Tuesday's trade is definitely optional and does change from week to week, but I do suspect we will be trading that SLV for a considerable time until silver has shot up higher. We'll take some looks at what happened the last time the Fed did QE, how quickly precious metals were able to front run that, and how long those bull markets lasted. Uh, but it's really uh, quite a sizable length of time that the precious metals did rally in the face of quantitative easing uh, back in 2008 and 9. Uh, so the most risky allocation for those of you who want to have the highest potential return but get ready for some serious volatility, you can skip the SPY trade which gives you the most diversified product in the world, 504 companies and one ETF. It's hard to beat. If you just don't have the money to do that right now, I think you'll be very happy if you follow this program for a considerable amount of time. Now you got to realize silver is a very volatile asset and so we have to be very disciplined and follow the macro to get the best return on this. So if you do have a lot less capital and you want to just get started right away and not have the 100 shares of SPY, you can follow this allocation right here. And you can see we still have an equal ratio of equity to bonds in terms of SLV to TLT. Now SLV is a fund that's tracking the price of silver. And again, once we see the price of silver shoot up, we'll rotate into SIV just like we've done very successfully playing the rise of gold this year. Now, if you got today's trade alert document and it says your free trials expired or you don't have the trade content, then you need to upgrade your account. Dean at 505-322-7515 is an expert trader. He follows our program. He's been trading options for a long time. He can get you started, answer all your questions, take a look at what you have in your portfolio. People call us in all the time to take a look at what they have and pretty quickly we realize uh, you're trading like you're a 21 year old and you should be really locking in the profits, adding the bonds to your portfolio, getting a little exposure to precious metals. You're missing out on having a put option below your assets to protect from downside risks. And in general, that's what we're finding. And then to make things worse, you have so many positions that you don't know what on earth is going on. You can't possibly watch all the charts and follow all the data. You have huge positions in specific stocks that put you at tremendous business risk. And this is in the face of major, major risks in the market. We've got impeachment. We have the U.S.-China trade war. We have the PMIs around the world crashing. We have Germany in a recession. We have Italy about to go bankrupt. We have the Yellow Vest Movement in France. We've got the Hong Kong protests. We've got Taiwan buying massive amounts of fighter jets. And then we have the Middle East ready to start a new war. So there's a lot of risks out there. If you're just hanging on to some random stocks that you, for whatever reason, like, you may be in, uh, in for a rude awakening when these various catalysts hit the market. Reminder, we have a Wednesday webinar for our paid group only at 1 p.m. And then our Thursday trade uh, or webinar for everyone. So we welcome everyone to that pro, uh, webinar. And this is a Zoom webinar. You get the link in your email automatically about one hour before it goes live each week. So that's a webinar everyone can attend for an unlimited amount of time. We'll talk the markets. We'll talk our strategy and hopefully convince you to, to make the big leap. Instead of having this super risky portfolio going into the golden years, maybe it's time to tighten it up. You can get much better results with a tiny portfolio in terms of how many different securities you own. And like I said, we have it boiled down to as little as three and as many as four total assets you need in your portfolio to achieve the same results we've been achieving. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, download the YouTube app, click the little bell. You can watch our live stream on the go every day and be on top of what's happening. Now, here's a look at our disclaimer. And again, if you want to read the full disclaimer, you can go to our website. 
Uh, finally, I do want to point out that if you go to the description box in your YouTube link, you can find a link to our advisory, our boot camp, you can view our pricing options, you can read all trade alerts. Now tell me one advisory out there that does publish all of their trade alerts to the public. They don't do it. They're sweeping their trades under the rug. Nobody gets the results. This is a program where the trade alerts are highly predictable. They come out at noon Eastern. It's very easy to follow. You can review our full track record. Again, trying to get track records out of most of the other advisors out there is like pulling teeth. Uh, they're convoluted. They're hidden. You know, it's, it's a big joke. This is a program that actually works and has a very, very happy group of people who follow the program. Uh, here's what you'll see if you do go to the updates page where you can see every trade alert we've ever published, including the videos, uh, analyzing each trade. So again, we're completely transparent and open uh, for you guys to check that all out. Uh, if you look at the advisory, it just has a simple summary of what we do when we do it. We're not trying to sell uh, snakes oil like most people out there. In fact, I don't think you'll find many advisories that try to brag about making 1% a month. That's all we're trying to achieve with extreme safety. So you can go check out that. This is our boot camp. For those of you who don't want to just have the fish delivered to you on a silver plate, you actually want to learn how to do the entire strategy inside out. You want to know how the option market works. You want to know what all these assets are. We have a very uh, exciting 16-week boot camp that you can join and it repeats every 16 weeks. At the end of the 16 weeks you can actually fly out to meet our team and we'll watch over your shoulders as you trade on a Thursday and a Friday. So you buy this boot camp once and you have access to it for life. It repeats three times a year indefinitely and the big thing is that we have a exclusive webinars on Monday and Tuesday just for our boot camp members. Now we also have some advanced trade alerts that are only issued to bootcamp members, uh, which will take advantage of option spreads, which we don't do in our normal advisory, and takes advantage of the futures market for the biggest play I see headed our way, uh, which is simply to take advantage of shorting the Chinese currency. And uh, finally, if you do go to the options page, you can look at a combination of packages, whether it's the advisory, the boot camp, or a combo of both. And we now have some tremendous financing offers that you can find there. Uh, finally, if you are a member and you want to send us in any testimonials, we've been uh, getting quite a few lately, so we appreciate all of those. And I won't spend too much time on that, so we can jump into uh, most recent trade and where we're expecting the markets to go. So here's the most important chart in the world, the dollar index. Currencies around the world are devaluing, they're lowering rates, they're printing money, and this further uh, increases their big problem. They can't pay for the interest on all the debt they've racked up uh, because their currencies are devaluing relative to the dollar. This makes their interest expenses more and more expensive, and this uh, trend continues to grow by the day. Now, I do suspect the Fed is going to come in and drop rates October 30th at the next FOMC meeting and then most likely start up QE in November. Probably they'll disguise it with another name. I don't think they want to scare the world and say we're doing quantitative easing, uh, but it's quite obvious that that's what's going to happen. In fact, if you do look at their balance sheet, it's going up by the uh, billions on a daily basis. Now, just this morning, uh, literally 30 minutes ago, the New York Fed just bought $2 billion worth of short-term treasuries. So we'll take a better look at that in a moment. <clears throat> in terms of looking at our total portfolio returns, let me zoom in a little bit. Our Tuesday trade took a little bit of a hit, but I'm very confident in that play and intend to play it for uh, most likely the next one to two years. And we'll talk about why that's trading the silver market, but with calls and puts, so it's much more protected. 
our buy and hold precious metals portfolio in gold uh, primarily uh, continues to remain strong at the 50% return this year. SPY ETF trades are up 9%, uh, which has done well, but we've had a flat month this year so far, or rather this month in September. I'm expecting a very strong rally in stocks, and we'll talk about why uh, in the next uh, probably eight weeks. And then our bond portfolio is now up 17%, outperforming everything. It's been the most obvious trade, and I believe uh, it's probably going to have a relatively flat period over the next four to eight weeks until one of these catalysts we're looking for occurs, which I believe will be an implosion in the U.S.-China trade talks. Um, now, the nice thing about the bond portfolio is even if the trade war does not break down, I still don't think we're going to see a significant sell-off in the TLT because number one, we have the Fed uh, starting to peg the rates. And then two, we still have collapsing PMIs all around the world and negative rates. So that, that TLT should be in a pretty firm place and it acts as a safety precaution to protect our, our stock position primarily. So our current setup is a bullish trade on the equity portfolio one on the SPY. Now again, to get the exact options we're using, you have to be a member. So if you are a member and you have any questions about getting filled on today's trade, please let me know in the chat box. Uh, but we remain very bullish on the SPY ETF until the trade talks break down. Um, and I think there's a tiny chance that they make an interim deal. I had been anticipating the Chinese would buy farming good products and want to create a period of peace during their 70th year anniversary. Sure enough, they came out and bought farm, farming goods last week. Now, the response was not what I had anticipated. I was anticipating that perhaps Trump would be willing to reciprocate and potentially delay the December tariffs and possibly even delay sanctions on Huawei. I thought that might be the best possible outcome to close out the year. And if so, it'd be extremely bullish for equities. Uh, and at the same time, I still wouldn't be very concerned about a sell-off uh, on the TLT. So this puts us in a position to be essentially long the SPY and the TLT at the same time. Uh, but what's happened is we are getting more and more aggressive rhetoric from, the, from Trump, especially at the United Nations. And China's response, uh, which you could have listened to this weekend, uh, was a 15-minute speech essentially highlighting that they have uh, the fastest growing economy in the world. They anticipate to be the most important economy and that they're not going to change really anything uh, at all to appease the United States. So very tough response from China. There's a big speech coming up in the next 12 hours from President Xi that should give us some insight. And uh, so that's kind of where we're at right now. <clears throat> we'll talk about why we're uh, constructive on U.S. equities in a minute. Here's our return month by month. I do want to point out we tend to have uh, big returns after small returns and vice versa. So you can see after hitting our best return of the year in June of 3.2%, we had our only loss in July. Uh, so although we've had a relatively slow September, I'm not worried at all in terms of our forecast. There's been some small headlines, or actually quite dramatic headlines, that have hit uh, the U.S. equity market from impeachment to uh, this whole idea of delisting the Chinese stocks. Uh, in the, and also not uh, loosening up on Huawei. And despite all that, the SPY ETF is still a few dollars from all-time highs. It shows you just how strong the U.S. stock market is and why it's really one of the only places to invest. Uh, so we'll jump into that in a little bit. But our current average return per month is sitting at 1.6. So we're well above our target of 1%. And we've been able to do it uh, with very, very little drawdown. I also want to point out, if you look at your own returns and you say, oh, well, I have close to the same profit you do, my question for you is this. I want you to look at your return in May and your return in December and tell me what was your maximum drawdown, okay? Because 
What's important here is not just the returns we're generating, it's the maximum drawdown in a single month relative to our average return. And so if you can pull off a 16% return and have no drawdown when stocks fell 15% in December and 5.5% in May, then you might be getting close to the results we're having. Because it's not just about return, it's about risk to reward. And our risk to reward has been extremely lucrative and that's why our program is so popular. So again, we're not trying to just jump into uh, momentum trades and hit a big win uh, while risking a lot. We're doing the exact opposite. We're using the options to actually protect our assets. That creates a drag on our results. Uh, but the, the end result is that we have very, very little opportunity to lose because of how our portfolio is designed. Okay, so our last trade was on Friday and the SPY was trading at 297.36. Everything was looking great. During the middle of the live stream, uh, we get this rumor that the U.S. may delist Chinese uh, equities or create some sort of capital flow. Uh, and this created a quick sell-off to close out the day. Our put option uh, at the 295 was actually ready to pay off for us. Uh, if we went any lower today, but then over the weekend, the Treasury said, oh, we're just kidding. We're not going to really do that. It was fake news. And uh, so what happened was our maximum loss Friday was 295 on the SPY. So if it went to 290 this morning, we wouldn't care. We would still get 295 a share. And so that's the beauty of taking the time to buy put options. Now with the SPY, we can do this three times a week for a very low cost. And to make things even more interesting, we can sell a call option way out of the money so that we still get to generate profits to the upside, uh, but we can use that out of the money call option credit to finance our downside protection. So uh, there's going to be a moment in the next three or four months at a minimum, uh, or rather at a maximum, where I think the U.S.-China trade war is going to completely derail itself. And that's when these put options are not just going to be a little bit of help, they're going to be a huge help. Now the TLT provides a lot of insurance against bad news from the trade war, uh, but these put options give us ultimate protection and uh, it ensures we get an exact price for every share we own no matter what. We could have the SPY drop to 200 tomorrow, we still get 295 a share. Okay, so that was the trade alert. Uh, this morning, the SPY was at, when I closed at the trade, 296.93. So we lost 43 cents on the SPY. Our option protection with the caller cost 24 cents to put on. We got 8 cents back, 16 cent loss there. So we're down 58 cents a share. Not a big deal. The big news is that the rest of the world is crashing. Their bond markets are in negative yielding territory. There's nowhere to put your money out there. Complete waste. So where can you invest? Where are there still strong earnings growth? It's all in the U.S. So that's why we're seeing the U.S. dollar uh, go up very quickly uh, this year. We're seeing treasuries continue to have tons of demand from foreign investors despite their currencies uh, crashing. So they're going to have to convert from dollars into their currency. Uh, and then the U.S. stock market is the only stock market index in the world that's near all-time highs. Everything else uh, is still floating in nowhere land on the verge of collapse. So all this leads to uh, when you come to think about where you're going to invest your money, it's going to be in U.S. equities, U.S. bonds, and the dollar. Now, what's going to get us above this sticky $300 level? First of all, I think that there's a high probability of no trade escalation uh, at this current time because the trade talks are just reconvening. They're starting to buy farming good products. I think it's just a lot of tough talk at this point. So we haven't seen any moves from the administration to really escalate this at this period of time. We've had impeachment headlines come in and create a little bit of volatility, uh, but I don't think that's going anywhere. There's nowhere, no way the Congress is going to impeach Trump. So I think that's just uh, noise to ignore. 
The most important thing is what are the central banks doing? So 80% of the central banks are lowering rates, printing money. We can see this from the dollar index. The U.S. is quite likely to follow suit. We have 12 speakers coming out this week. I'll be listening to them carefully, but I'm quite certain they'll be discussing lower rate for October by 25 basis points and that they need to inject some capital, that we don't have enough liquidity in the banks. And this just means they're going to essentially bail out the banks again, let them get rid of all these bonds in their portfolios, sweep it under the rug into the central bank's balance sheet, into the dark abyss, and now they're going to have a fully loaded gun to buy U.S. equities. Uh, that's what I'm expecting. Let's take a look at the top news to support all of these predictions. <clears throat> so the big question you have to ask you have to ask yourself is Trump going to make a wimpy deal with China? And if he does, this would probably be extremely bullish for equities. And again, I'm not too concerned about a huge sell-off in the TLT uh, because the Fed is not reacting to what it predicts will happen in the future like the stock market does. Stocks like to predict what's going to happen, evaluate where the price should be ahead of time, and it makes it very hard to, uh, to really outthink and outpredict the stock market. Meanwhile, the Fed does the opposite. They look at old data and react accordingly. So the old data is that the world PMI just hit 47. China's growth is tanking quickly. The rate of change is very alarming from 14% GDP uh, just a few years ago crashing to below 6. You can get a, an idea of where that's headed. And we're seeing this flow into Germany now in a recession, their PMI at 40. Uh, so it's quite clear the central banks have to lower rates, print money, get their banks to swap out these treasuries and these bonds they've picked up and put them into the central bank's balance sheets. And this will essentially bail out all the banks around the world and free up their capital uh, for most likely supporting their equity markets. Uh, so I don't think Trump is going to take a weak deal. And if we look back through his uh, all the way back to the Republican primaries, he was talking about being tough on China way back then, and he has not changed his stance at all. In fact, the only thing we've seen him do that was at all nice has been uh, slightly delaying tariffs here and there. So from my point of view, I think the most bullish thing that could happen for stocks uh, to close out the year would be a delay in the December 15th tariffs and a delay in the sanctions. And China would have to uh, most likely uh, commit to the seven things that they're really targeting, primarily uh, subsidizing key industries, which makes it impossible for the U.S. to compete, and then also the IP theft. So I think if they say they'll talk about those two items and then buy a lot of farming good products, we could at least push the finish line a little further uh, down the road. If not, look for the trade war to implode, as I do not think Trump will take uh, any kind of weak deal. So, you know, go back to last December with the, uh, with the wall issue and shutting down the government. Uh, Trump likes to make headlines. So, and this is also with the impeachment pressure. So quite likely uh, we've got some fireworks to close out the year. If you don't have that TLT in your portfolio, you don't have gold, you might really think about it. Okay, so I'm also, you know, definitely curious what effect the uh, threat of impeachment will have. I don't think very much. Uh, you can also go back and look at the uh, Clinton impeachment, and we had a very strong bull market there, not because of the impeachment, but because of what the Fed was doing. I uh, will I have a chart of that we can look at a little bit. So I do think that's noise. Here's the Fed speakers coming up, uh, and you can see we have a whole smorgasbord of them. We'll see how conflicted they are, uh, and the final one at the end of the week is Powell. So 
if if what I'm expecting comes out, we got rate cuts coming at the end of the month, and the talk about uh, this is from his last speech: organic growth of the balance sheet, maybe a one-time. We're talking about injecting 400 to a trillion dollars one time into the banking system, and then going into something like 40 billion dollars a month of purchases. Meanwhile, we have a little bit negative PMI print from Chicago PMI, so that'll help them uh, with this uncertainty. We've got a ton of data coming out this week. Probably the most important being uh, the health of uh, the job sector on Friday. This is the Communist Party's Twitter handle. Of course, it's illegal to have uh, Twitter in China unless you're part of the Communist Party, then it's okay. Hong Kong police said, citing intelligence, that core rioters are planning serious violence on October 1st including killing police officers, disguising as police killing people, arson inside the mall, mobs are also recruiting suicide attackers. Does the West support? This is hilarious. Now, if you do watch, um, like, China Uncensored is a good YouTube channel. Uh, they're out there in the streets. There's tear gas everywhere. There's little kids protesting. It's complete mayhem. And then you go look at CCN TV. That's the Chinese... Uh, English news channel that they flow around the world uh, and they've got a picture of the Hong Kongers singing the Chinese anthem so very comical in terms of how those two uh, portray um, the same scene Chinese stock fell on the last trading day before the national holiday now there's a week of the markets being closed which a lot of people are saying is why we're seeing a little sell-off in gold and silver right now not worried about it, guys. I want to be ahead of the game and play the big picture in terms of gold and silver right now. So we're going to be willing to take some volatility in those two assets to look at the big picture and see what's coming our way. And the big picture is that China has misallocated tremendous amounts of capital. They've grown their debt levels by 50% a year, uh, which is just complete insanity. And the only way they can continue this is if they can get more and more money lent to them from around the world. So if they get cut off, they are going to have a collapse and there's no way around it. Uh, so very interesting to see what President Xi's speech will have uh, for us. Uh, we'll definitely cover that in tomorrow's live stream. China trade turmoil, China urging a calm and rational solution. That's after the headline Friday where they threw out the rumor that we would be um, delisting their securities. That would be detrimental to China. But also, think about all the banks and hedge funds. You know, even our favorite Ray Dalio has a huge amount of money uh, tied up in China. All of our banks, every single one, has hundreds of billions of dollars that they'll never get out of China. Uh, so unless they help urge the administration to do a deal, uh, they're going to lose tons of money from all their business in China. Amazon continues to take down inefficient retailers. Here's JP Morgan's global PMI, and you can see it's below 50 now. Uh, that gives the central banks all the ammunition they need to, uh, to support dropping rates, printing money. Now China, which of course is known for lying, uh, puts out this really nice PMI right before their holiday weekend, whether you believe it or not. Um, Looking at the political spectrum, interesting chart, just showing that the potential for a huge infrastructure budget uh, and pressure on China seems to be something that overlaps between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, uh, regardless of uh, who becomes the next president. Betting markets are saying Biden is the real loser here, shaping up to be Warren versus Trump, which is what he wanted all along. Campaign will be brutal.
Trump implicates in Biden every time he's accused. Joe's done. House can do what they want. Senate is not impeaching Trump. Trump just got rid of his biggest opponent, and the opposition did it for him. Financial analysts argue that the Fed needs to buy anywhere from $200 billion to a half a trillion dollars in Treasury securities to bulk up its balance sheet. Just don't call it QE4. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> Just not QE4. Here's a look at the uh, debt market in the U.S. Uh, $9 trillion in corporate debt, $9 trillion in mortgage-backed securities, uh, and then $15.6 trillion in U.S. Treasuries. So I think that's why uh, these primary dealers are not letting go of their Treasuries. They know they can't sell them all without uh, spiking the yield and killing the value. So they're waiting for the Fed to come in and unload those directly to the Fed, clean up their balance sheet, and uh, without the risk of a major decoupling with U.S. China, I think they will start to load up on stocks. China's Ministry of Commerce, a delegation led by Chinese Vice Premier Liu He, will visit U.S. for the 13th round of trade talks after the National Day holiday. So this has been expedited. Clearly, the threat of, de of delisting their equities, cutting them off from all our index products, uh, is probably the only thing that could actually make the Chinese uh, be forced to do a deal. Now, if we did that, that would create a huge disruption in equities. Uh, so definitely got to keep close eye on that. Now, I was talking about how I was concerned that we wouldn't be able to profit from the China, China collapse through their equity market. And the only way we could would be if the U.S. were to do something of that nature. Uh, because from my point of view, I think they will be willing to devalue their currency, print money, and pump it into their banking system and into their equities market because they are desperate to continue getting dollars uh, and money flowing into China so they can keep this, uh, this insane building projects going on to keep their GDP up, to keep all these people employed. And uh, so it was interesting to see that hint come out Friday. Kyle Bass has been going around talking to all the senators about it. Uh, there's been generals talking about how this should be outlawed for, for months, all the way back since uh, really May of this year. I was seeing prominent uh, interviews about this. Um, but I think the more surefire way to profit uh, will be from expecting the Chinese to devalue their currency like they have for the last 12 months, like they did in the last slowdown in 2015 and 16, and to be willing to do that to support their markets. Now, uh, their currency only represents 1% of the total currency trading, so it's tiny. And... Uh, they've tried to create markets where they can trade their currency for things like oil. Nobody wants anything to do with it. Nobody trusts the Chinese uh, accounting because they say it's all state secrets. So we can really only judge China uh, accurately by their trading with their partners. Now, they're claiming they've turned into a domestic economy, but we can't see anything going on in there. So it's a load of bull hunky. And that's why I think their currency is going to continue having a lot of trouble here uh, as they try to keep this charade, charade up. Uh, okay, now this, <clears throat> China has strict capital controls. So you can put money into China, you just can't pull it out. And that's what all the banks are going to learn and hedge funds are going to learn a hard lesson with is that uh, the Chinese system is closed. Once you put the money in, it's not coming out and it's very, very controlled. Only the super rich in the Communist Party are allowed to sneak money out and they use the Bank of China to do that. Um, and what they've done, as you've seen, is they've gone and bought real estate all over the world from Canada, Australia, uh, New York, Hong Kong. That's what they like to do. And so uh, if we take a look at this, you can see they've been trying to restrict outflow by its residents. And it's done a relatively good job. But look at the blue line, net error emission. That's why we like Bitcoin. The government's trying to uh, restrict capital flight from Chinese residents. And at the same time, they're devaluing their currency 
at a very rapid rate. So of course uh, that makes prices go up against the value of their currency and everyone's trying to get out of the Chinese currency. That's why we see this huge pickup in net error and emission. They've tried their best to restrict it, but people are finding ways to get their money out. Meanwhile, the protests in Hong Kong are creating serious problems to their economy. This is China's only way to get outside capital. If Hong Kong goes down, China goes down. And so watching these riots continue is very fascinating and we're all wondering, will it end in bloodshed? What exactly is going to happen of this? Uh, so this could, be, uh, this could be the most important piece of news to be following right now. Uh, and I had anticipated that Chinese would buy farming goods, but the response I did not anticipate. So that's definitely uh, something that's not quite lining up uh, correctly yet. Bank of America has a whole piece, if you want to read this in detail, uh, they're just extremely bullish on stocks because of all the things we've been talking about. Really doesn't make sense to buy equities around the world. Uh, their bonds are at negative yields, so no point in buying those bonds. You'll guarantee to lose money on that. And so where what's left? We've got QE coming and we've got nowhere else to invest. US stocks have a huge potential run up there's a ton of money just in cash, and once the Fed releases uh, this pressure where all the banks are pretty much stuck in their bond positions, they're going to free up all this ammunition to drive stocks much higher. Uh, so we'll take a close look at that as uh, all these Fed speeches come out this week. In our portfolio, instead of having just 10% in GDX, we actually have 8% in GDX, 1% in Bitcoin, and 1% in Ethereum. If you don't want to do crypto, that's fine. Just want to let you guys know that is a way to spice up that part of your buy and hold portfolio uh, with the right risk. So a lot of people will go put 10, 20, 30% of their portfolio in gold or cryptocurrencies, and that's crazy. Uh, but what we're showing you guys here makes a lot more sense. And in my mind is a very aggressive allocation already. <clears throat> Here's the uh, one against the dollar, you can see it's moved from something like 6.3 for a dollar to 7.14 and I believe this is getting ready to leapfrog to 7.4 to 7.8 to offset uh, new tariffs that are coming in December and also uh, because they just simply can't uh, keep up with how many people want to sell their currency and convert to the dollar. So this trend uh, looks like it could get much worse and depending on how high the tariffs go we can to a degree predict uh, how much they will devalue their currency. So in our boot camp program we'll be trading this with the futures market. Uh, it won't be part of our normal advisory as it is a little more advanced. Meanwhile the euro continues to crash against the dollar. They're expected to release a bazooka of stimulus. And we have Christine Lagarde coming in, one of the most dovish uh, central bankers of all time. Also a dirty banker who uh, paid off some $300 million to the last president in France. Uh, so very scandalous. Japanese currency, these guys are willing to print an unlimited amount of money, probably one of the biggest buyers of U.S. equities. And so uh, if you're ever scared to buy the dip, just remember the Bank of Japan is not. There's gold sitting at 1500 and we may have a little bit of a pullback this week. The Chinese are not allowed to buy uh, anything this week. They want to have a period without worrying about financial markets for their holiday. And this happens every year. So uh, for us, good opportunity to buy any weakness and get the proper allocation uh, looking ahead at the big picture. Here's your spot silver. Uh, so you, you can see gold is sitting at a relative high and has made the first big move. And we saw the same thing happen in Bitcoin. We're seeing the same thing happen in the stock market. We're seeing the best stocks go up first. 
stabilize, and then we're seeing the little guys catch up next. And so I believe the same pattern is coming for silver, which is why we have that in our Tuesday play. And uh, our buy and hold again, we're not playing spot silver, we're playing the miners. They can make a huge profit with gold at this price. Silver, the spot needs to catch up, needs to break beyond 20, probably substantially higher than 20, and then we'll switch over to the silver mining ETF for our Tuesday play. All the drama with Aramco, and we're still back at the same oil price. This is a healthy price for everything we're doing in our portfolio. Uh, if, if crude oil got way too low, I would most likely be very scared for our equities. And on the other hand, if crude oil got too expensive, I'd be very concerned for both the TLT and the SPY. Right here at 60 is the happy medium. German bond yield has been the best leading indicator for what's going to happen next in U.S. bond yields. And clearly they are still suffering and headed into lower and lower negative territory. And you can see the similarities between these two charts. Here's a look at that SPY on the verge of a massive breakout ahead of QE. Um, TLT, I think it won't have a significant sell-off anytime soon uh, just because all the rates around the world are so low, doesn't make sense for it to spike and we're continuing to see money flood into the dollar. So this all points to a pretty stable TLT and allows us to have a great insurance. We get a bad uh, trade headline or some sort of breakthrough in the impeachment that's very negative for Trump uh, or maybe North Korea firing missiles at Japan or Hong Kong uh, having bloodshed or major war in Iran. And there's so many risks. TLT is ready to have Another rally way beyond 147. As we can see, these rates continue to drop probably as low as zero. So uh, still along the TLT, although we're expecting the big gains right now to come from the SPY. GDX, you can look back. It was able to have a huge rally last time we had massive QE. And the reason we're doing QE now is very similar to the reason we did QE back then. Uh, except the problems are a hundred times worse. So the debt has grown significantly around the world. It's not just the U.S. trying to save its mortgage uh, industry and banking system. Now it's the whole world trying to do it. So this is significantly worse this time, and I believe gold is just getting started as these banks are uh, getting near the point where they go into massive QE. Same thing for silver. We can see the last run up hit 47. We've got a little sell off today. Um, not worried about it. You can see the big spike in volume uh, down here, and everybody knows the writing on the wall. QE is coming, and this is going to be very bullish for gold and silver. LQD is the investment grade corporate bond ETF for this rally in stocks to stop. Uh, it's really the corporate buybacks that have to end. And so until we see the cost of credit for the top of the spectrum, like Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon crash, it's going to be very hard to stop them from just borrowing money for almost free and then buying their own stock. And if you think about it, if they can get lent money for nearly 0%, why wouldn't they go turn around and buy their own company ahead of QE? It just... It's a, it's a no-brainer for the corporation, and they're willing to hold that position uh, almost indefinitely. Plus, it, it makes their earnings per share rapidly go up. Uh, so until we see this really sell off, I'd be very skeptical of a long-term bear market in equities. Now, FXI is the single ETF that will give you exposure to all the top large cap Chinese companies in a single index. So if you want to buy put options uh, ahead of the potential delisting of U.S. securities, this would be the way to do it. I was a little skeptical of that play until the news on Friday 
uh, where they've actually started to talk about being willing to do that. So that is huge news, and it gives us two potential ways to profit from a collapse in China. Number one, to short their currency with the futures market. That's something we'll only do in our boot camp. Now, uh, to trade FXI, you could buy puts or you could just get the Yang ETF. So most likely in our buy and hold portfolio as part of our advisory. If and when we get another headline that there's going to be uh, some sort of capital controls to China from the U.S. equity markets, our index products, our banks, um, we could probably do both trades. So I like shorting their currency to predict they'll devalue against new tariffs. And in terms of trying to play this delisting of Chinese currencies, either puts on FXI or the Yang ETF. So that gives us two ways to, uh, to approach that. Alibaba is their, really their champion uh, Amazon ripoff over in China. And it had some significant trouble with that news. It's been having trouble all month. And uh, this could be a single stock to short if you want some very targeted exposure. Now, I don't think we need to do it right now. There should be a period of dialogue, of talking, and we'll see what comes of the trade deal. Best bet for this one is wait for the bad news, then jump on it, uh, because timing's very difficult. All right, guys, that is a wrap for today's presentation. Let's see if we have any final questions, and then we'll get ready for next uh, tomorrow's trade alert. See how our current trade's doing. And we're up, looking good. All right, guys, I really appreciate everybody's time. Make sure you give Dean a call at 505-322-7515. He'll take a look at your portfolio, uh, give you his personal opinion on where the uh, worst assets are in your portfolio and then answer any questions you may have about how to uh, follow our program. So thanks again, and look forward to a new trade alert same time tomorrow.